Hey guys, welcome back. This is Michael. The OpenSUSE project has released the latest version of OpenSUSE Leap 15.6. This is the last currently planned version of Leap 15. What it has in store, why it might even be a great final firework and what the future holds for Leap users, this is what this video is about. Let's get it started. The OpenSUSE project offers various additions for different application purposes. The Leap branch was based on the stable SUSE Linux Enterprise branch and still follows its product versions till today. Leap 15.6 is therefore based on SLE 15.6. The OpenSUSE Leap branch is particularly appreciated and favored by LTS users who are looking for a version that is supported and stable as long as possible. With OpenSUSE Leap 15.6, the last planned release is currently available. This is because SUSE is replacing the SLE product solution with ALP. ALP stands for Adaptable Linux Platform and will be a completely new structure for the popular Linux server operating system. For Leap, this means that the previous basis will be discontinued and major changes are in store for the year 2025. Now, with big changes come big risks, let's not kid ourselves. A version 15.7 has already been announced for SLE. The OpenSUSE developers have also already announced that in the event of delays or complications on the migration path from SLE to ALP, a version leap 15.7 is on the table as an interim release, at least as an option. The message is that they do not want to leave the base of Leap users without support. So if there are delays, Leap 15.7 could still come. According to current planning, OpenSUSE Leap 15.6 will still support it at least until December 2025. So if you switch to Leap 15.6 in summer 2024, you'll still have almost one and a half year to see what happened next. On the one hand, this affects those who may switch to OpenSUSE Leap, but more so those who are now using Leap 15.5 and where the upgrade is pending. Let's check the minimum requirements. A 2GB dual core processor or better, 2GB physical RAM additional memory for your workload, more than 40GB free hard disk space, either a DVD drive or a USB port for the installation medium, Internet access is helpful and is required for the network installer. OpenSUSE Leap is the branch with the static version, for instance, the LTS branch. Previous versions, OpenSUSE Leap 15.6 supports a wide range of architectures. Here is the list. For those who want to visualize OpenSUSE Leap, virtual machine images are also available for download. You can then download an offline or network image based on your architecture. The target group of OpenSUSE Leap are users who need a stable and reliable system. Although the latest packages are not always available, users benefit from the expertise and stability of SUSE Linux Enterprise. The focus is on the highest possible stability and long-term maintenance. However, Leap 15.5 showed that not all desktop environments have been updated equally. Whilst KDE users can access it without hesitation, GNOME or Cinnamon users may want to consider other options. With Leap 15.6 it is the other hand. There is a brand new GNOME version and KDE users are stick on the last LTS branch, but more on that later. Let's check what's new. OpenSUSE Leap 15.6 offers many improvements and new features. Cockpit integration provides a user-friendly web-based interface for system management, ideal for administrators to easily monitor and manage systems. Podman 4.8 updated container management software that offers enhanced features and better performance. Updated core components, Linux kernel 6.4, better hardware support and improved performance, OpenSSL 3.1, improved security and support for new cryptography algorithms, MariaDB 10.11.6 and PostgreSQL 16, new functions and performance improvements for database management. Desktop environments, KDE Plasma 5.27.11, new functions and improvements in the user interface, 
GNOME 45 Improvements in Usability and Performance Virtualization Xen and KVM Updated versions for better stability and performance Support for multiple architectures enables use on different hardware platforms. Support This version is supported until December 2025, providing long-term stability. In addition, Leap 15.6 brings many updated packages and improved security functions to meet the requirements of modern IT infrastructures. If you want to try out OpenSUSE, it's very easy. Download the ISO image from the OpenSUSE website. Go to Leap and then hit Install Leap. Now either click here on the right at Download or here on the Download button. Now you have the choice, choose your architecture, I assume the most of you will use Intel or AMD 64-bit desktops, in that case you can choose between either an offline image or a network image. The offline image is 4.3GB and the network image is 261MB. If you select the network image, an uh, internet connection is absolutely necessary. The offline image does not need an internet connection. Just hit download and a few seconds later the download starts. After the download is complete, you can flash the ISO on a USB device or a DVD. I recommend you to use a tool such as Bolina Etcher. After the device is flashed, reboot your system, connect the USB device and then boot from it and then the installer starts. If you want to use it in virtual machines, just try it out for instance with VirtualBox, boot your image and then try OpenSUSE. Let's come to the system measurement. My system with GNOME Shell used 6.3 GB of the hard disk. The initial benchmark value for RAM consumption is 1.4 GB of memory. The system had 2216 RPM packages pre-installed. At the time of creating this video, GNOME Shell 45.3 was offered. Those who prefer to use KDE Plasma will greet it by Plasma 5.27.11. Unfortunately, the latest Plasma 6 version did not make it into this version. With OpenSUSE, GNOME is only given its own background image, nothing more, no customizations or the like. In my eyes, this is not a good message. If you want to be a desktop distro and don't claim to be an universal, you should deliver more. Those with the appropriate Linux knowledge will customize the desktop to suit their own requirements anyway. But newcomers to OpenSUSE with GNOME would be left with a subduted user experience. Let's come to the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.4, as browser there's Firefox, as email client there's GNOME Evolution, as office package there's LibreOffice and as software container we have Flatpak. The pre-selected selection of apps could be improved in my eyes. Some games, Tiger VNC, Xterm or Transmission are pre-installed for example. Who needs that? Nobody. The balance could be saved and nobody would be bothered. What I also don't like is that Flatpak is pre-installed but FlatHub is not configured as a package source. What's the point of that? Then either don't install Flatpak or pre-configure it properly for desktop use. It's just rubbish like this. What I like is that OpenSUSE also provides Leap with the new LibreOffice version currently 24.2.1.2 is offered. Perfect. With Leap 15.6 we've currently reached the end of the road for Leap 15. As I said, Leap 15.7 could still be released if problems or delays occur on the way to ALP. In any case, SLE 15.7 has already been announced as a service pack by SUSE. Nevertheless, there is a slight aftertaste. What will happen next? What will Leap 16 be like? And can Leap 15 users simply switch to Leap 16? Simple really does mean simple. After all, it's not a new SLE base, but a completely new substructure. Lots of question marks. Anyone currently use Leap 15.5 can switch with a clear conscience. Can I recommend switching to OpenSUSE Leap at the current time? I would be cautious about that. There must be something very special about Leap that justifies the switch. 
The only unique selling point I can think of is Yast. But at the same time, I can't think of any reason why you should switch from another distro to Leap because of Yast. Let's come to the conclusion. Support for Leap 15.6 is given until December 2025, which is very good. For GNOME users, Leap 15.6 is de facto a good release, delivering a fairly new GNOME Shell version for the LTS branch. KDE users are stuck with the LTS branch of Plasma 5.27, which is a shame, especially since OpenSUSE is a traditional KDE distro. Cockpit integration is nice, but it's certainly secondary for the desktop. The same applies to containers and virtualization. The bottom line is an appropriate modernization of the package base from which GNOME users benefit in particular and KDE users are more or less left in the cold. I would wait a few more weeks before upgrading. Quite simple, so as not to take any problems that may still be found with the upgrade. What's your situation? The OpenSUSE Leap users among you, when will you switch to Leap 15.6? Hand on heart, if you are now using any other distro or Windows, has Sleep 15.6 made you curious so that you are planning to switch? I'm curious to see if anyone gets in touch. Feel free to write your thoughts in the comments, I'm curious. If you like Linux videos, then please subscribe for free to the channel, give the video a thumbs up for the algorithm and hit the bell to be notified immediately when I upload a new video. Thank you. I, who switched to Linux with SUSE Linux in 2003, I'm glad that OpenSUSE still exists. However, I'm somewhat concerned about the development. The changeover to ALP will be time consuming and cost resources. At the same time, however, OpenSUSE is creating more and more additions. Leap, Tumbleweed, Leap Micro, and MicroOS. Then the individual desktop editions also have code names, which makes it difficult to keep an overview. I hope OpenSUSE stays on course and can write the changeover with Leap 16 as a success story. In the end card, I will show you two interesting videos. The first video is about OpenSUSE MicroOS, and the other one we take a look at OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. If Leap is too boring for you, these two rolling distros might be an interesting alternative to you. Thank you for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace.